Glampalooza, the ultimate guide to all things glamping. Discover the beauty and luxury of outdoor living with expert hosts and enthusiasts. Get ready to unplug, reconnect, and experience the magic of glamping. Join us now on Glampalooza. Welcome back to Glampalooza. Guys, this is going to be so cool. I've got Jason and Aaliyah, and they are at their farm from Yorkie Acres in Maryland. And it is, as you can see, a gorgeous day. We're going to find out all about Yorkie Acres and how they got into this and, and everything. So welcome to the show, guys. I'm, I'm really glad you're here. Would you please just take a moment, introduce yourselves and your spot? Sure. Uh, I'm Jason Donahue. I'm Aaliyah McClintock Donahue, husband and wife team. And this is our farm, Yorkie Acres Farm, uh, located in Friendsville, Maryland, um, as westernmost as you can get in Maryland. Uh, Mountain Maryland, we call it or they call it. Yeah, located in the Appalach Appalachian Mountains. Um, yeah, and so we, uh, you know, we have our glamping sites. We have a menagerie, as we like to call it, of animals here. Um, so we're always very busy. We grow medicinal herbs and plants, and so we're farming that as well. Uh, so we got a lot of fun things going on here. That does sound fun. Oh my goodness. All right, now, first things first, we got to go for the name. How on earth, why is it named Yorkie Acres Farm? Yeah, so this is my answer, yeah. So I, um, I get this question a lot. Um, so we moved to the farm in 2014, um, and I had a little Yorkie named Izzy at the time. She was about six when we moved here, um, and she just kind of became completely in charge of this place. Um, she, you know, little dog, big attitude. Um, she would go around the farm and, you know, chase goats, keep chickens in line, uh, go after the sheep. I mean, trying to chase cows. She was two pounds trying to, you know, corral these cows. Um, and she was just so feisty. And so, you know, over time, because it was just so funny to us watching her rule this place, um, we just referred to it as her farm. And so over the years, as a joke, it started out, we would call it Yorkie Acres, um, you know, and then as we were becoming a business, becoming an LLC, we were trying to think of a name and we're like, we have always called this Yorkie Acres. Like we can't, we can't call it anything else. Um, you know, so she was a very unique, special dog. Um, very special to us, um, and we think this place is very unique and special. Um, unfortunately, she passed away July 2020. Um, you know, my, one of my first babies. Um, she was almost 12 years old, um, and we love that she's just still, you know, such an important part of this. And so many people ask us about it and can connect to that name. Um, so we love that. And, you know, we know a name says a lot about a farm. Um, and we really think it's a testimony to our love and our connection with animals and these special bonds we create. Um, and you know, this name came out of love, just pure love. Um, and that's what we think we have here too, just pure love. Um, she was small, she was mighty, and we feel small, but we know we're mighty too. <laughs> there so, you go. Um, it was just a very fitting name. That's so for, great. For a special place. That's so great. And little dogs, yeah, they're like that. I mean, they're gonna, I see you cow that weighs 2,000 pounds. <laughs> no fear, no fear. The funny thing is they wouldn't even make eye contact with her. Like she would give them a look and they would like avert like, their yes, <laughs> Right, like, okay, all right, I gotta get in line. Izzy's watching me right now, yeah. <laughs> we, uh, our, our other big dog at the time was a, you know, 120 pound Rottweiler and he was, he was afraid of her too. He knew not to eat her food and oh. uh, everybody was afraid of Izzy for yeah, sure. Yeah, stepped back. You know, yeah. when Izzy was around, everyone was in line. Everyone was in <laughs> They got to act right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we were, we were probably in line too. You know, we did whatever Izzy said too. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. Oh my gosh, how funny. So this is, you know, for anybody who's unfamiliar with your farm, how would you describe the overall ambiance that you've got going, the whole experience that they're having? Um, well, first of all, we hope it's a lot of fun. We hope people have a lot of fun here. Um, but one of the other things I think is really important and really special about us, um, we're down in this peaceful valley just outside of this small rural town um, in Maryland. Uh, you know, like, like Jason said, Appalachian Mountains. Um, Rolling so, farmland, you know, yeah, a, lot of, a lot of farms, a lot of farmland. Beautiful. So you come down the road, you go around this turn um, into you know, into our farm, um, and it's 
you know, just beautiful. We have people tell us all the time how serene it is here. Um, they feel like they're in another country, you know, as soon as you round the bend into our farm, there's a beautiful big willow tree, um, lots of rocky terrain, which is great for our goats, of course. Um, but it's almost like you're transported to another country. Um, we have people all the time that are like, oh, this reminds me of Scotland. Um, you know, we have Scottish Highland cows, so of course that adds to that ambiance as well. But, you know, we're seeing, you're seeing all the animals, you're seeing this um, very unique landscape, which I think is special. Um, we have this beautiful stream along the property. Um, so, you know, hopefully fun, but also peaceful and serene. Um, and like I said, people have described described it i think as magical, magical. Ooh, which is which is the word like, we use that's the word you just, want yeah absolutely. so um every time i hear the word magical to describe this place you know i glow a little um i love hearing that um that's you know what we feel and so we're so excited that other people are able to experience that and feel that as well uh, and i would say you know magical is probably that organic word that people use to describe it um, i would say since day one um that's been the most common adjective to describe it uh, from, from our visitors. And um, I think that speaks for itself. That does. That's, I mean, when they come up with the perfect word, you're hoping that they're going to experience and they're just like, oh yeah, that's magical. They're like, oh, I got it. Right. I'm like, that's it. That's it. <laughs> yes, that's what I feel. And you feel it too. And I love it. <laughs> so you've got this kind of unique blend of glamping and farm life. And what is the, what's it like for the accommodations and what's the overall experience? What are people doing when they're there? Um, it, I think people come for, for different reasons. Uh, a lot come to, to reset or um, to kind of disconnect from, from whatever it is you know they're doing in their daily lives. Um, one recent guest, she came simply to watercolor. Uh, and when she checked out of the earth, she had this beautiful watercoloring that, that she left for us. Um, so I, I think you know people come to get inspired. Uh, they come to, to recreate. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of things in our area that draw people in um, so it can be a, you know there's a diverse background of, of people that will come and, and uh, things they do um, we're not surprised when there's people that just stay and don't leave the the yurt area and the pavilion you know they they'll stay all weekend um, that's so great so we get it though we get yeah, it. and we have we have two different um, accommodations on site currently mm -hmm. um, so we have a 20 foot yurt. Um, we added that, in, uh, we started with that in 2019. Uh, and great. then this, this spring we added a shipping container. It'll be our uh, four season. Uh, tiny house. Tiny house. Oh, that's fantastic. That's yeah. a big project. You know, yeah. they look so cool. Like, oh, wow, I want to put yeah. a tiny house, you know, the storage container tiny house. And it's like, it's, it's not an easy feat. Yeah, and it's it's fun. There's you know hot water shower in there. Um, both un units have compost toilets. Um, the yurt has a separate bathhouse um, that does have hot water during warm months. We do turn that off in the winter, but we're hoping that, that you know shipping container long term will be more four seasons. Um, and because we have a great you know great snow area here, um, there's a lot of skiing and snowboarding and you know snow recreation in the area. So we're hoping that will help with you know some four season accommodations too. Oh yeah, that sounds fantastic. That's great. And it's uh, you know it's one thing to have a yurt in a you know during the three seasons where it's really or two seasons where it's amazing, and then yeah. you know it can be hard to do you know to heat and air condition it or if you yeah, need to. We've had people stay in the winter in the year. Um, we have a heater. Um, oh, that's it. Yeah. It depends on how cold it is. Right, you know, exactly. It can pretty cold. It can get a little blustery. Um, so, <laughs> <That's a good laughs> word. blustery is the word. Um, <laughs> luckily, we're down in a little bit bit of a valley, so the wind's not really terrible right. here. But um, you know, it's not always a great four season. Yeah. Really well, there's a lot of very hardy glampers out there too. I'm always oh, amazed. Yes. Yeah, we're more like on a, the camp angle. Yeah, we we've, we've had people stay like January Ooh. in here. Um and it just depends. You never know what the winters are going to be like here. We've had Februarys with like 60, 70 degree weather um and then it'll be below freezing, you know, the next <laughs> week. So you just never know. 
Just never know. Never know. A little unpredictable here in Garrett County, Maryland. <laughs> well, you have to have, you know, borrow a dog or borrow a goat or something yeah. to, you know, snuggle up with. I know. Us. We did actually have someone ask us about a week ago that was staying in the in the yurt. They're like, are the dogs allowed on the bed? Can we cuddle them? Is that okay? And our dog, we have a, one of our dogs is a Bernice Mountain dog and he's huge. And so he might be the perfect winter, winter snuggler. Right. You know. <laughs> no other charge, market. just pet him. <laughs> he would love every second of it too. <laughs> yeah, I'm love sure it. he would not mind. <laughs> he would not at all. <laughs> oh man. All right, so you've got, you know, dogs, cats, a Highland cow, and what else do you have? And can you pet the Highland cow? <laughs> oh yes, yes. And we hope everyone interacts with the, the animals. I really think that's part of the charm and, and what makes this special. And we hear all the time, um, you know, people are People are like, oh, I saw you at Highland Cows. That's why we're staying here. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, the, really the Highland Cows and I would say the farm dogs are kind of the stars around here. Yeah. Um, but of course, we also have goats, um, which are a lot of fun. Um, we have two different two different types of sheep. Um, we've been downsizing a little bit with sheep, but um, we have some heritage breed sheep. Um, chickens, guinea fowls, um, honeybee hives. Uh, sometimes there's ducks around here. Hmm. Um, way too many farm cats, as I have one sitting on my lap right here. <laughs> the original um, farm cat. Scene. Yeah, so this is our original farm cat. <laughs> there you go. At the beginning. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of animals wandering around, and it's fun. You know, people be sitting down at the, there's a pavilion, covered pavilion beside the yurt that guests have access to. And, um, you know, it's not uncommon uncommon to be able to hang out with a goat or some chicken, <laughs> um, which, you know, again, is part of the experience. And we hope that people enjoy it. Most people do, I think. Um, yeah, as long as they're not trying to eat. I was going to say, <laughs> the dogs goats have, are kind of notorious for the dog, yeah. The dogs are great at kind of patrolling the area. And so they're funny, you know, when food comes out, the dogs kind of chase the chickens out of the space. So they're watching, you know, That's they, so uh, they've got it under control, probably better than we do sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. so great. And are there farm activities that people can, you know, do you welcome? Hey, come muck a stall or do you milk a cow? I don't know. I wish I wish mucking stalls was more common. I know um, we we ask people all the time if they want to. They don't want to do it. No, I, people are always like, oh yeah, and then no one ever really. Takes <laughs> they think you're joking. Right? That offer, I'm like no, seriously, let's get to work. Um, we yeah. uh, we we do to be uh, on a serious note. We do um, we started. Uh, doing farm visits um, before we added the yurt um, and what we what we do when people do come to visit is uh, we use spent beer grain from uh, a local brewery called Laurel Highlands Brewing uh, so people get a kick out of feeding the cows especially um, so, you know, so you can hand feed all the hand feed all the animals and you know we like to educate just on the benefits of uh, spent grain um, and do you have let me stop you there do you have to buy the spent grain or are they glad to just give it to you to get rid of it donated to us yeah. from their brewery which is amazing very nutritious that's amazing um great for you know the gut microbiome for the animals so it's a healthy treat they don't get it all the time um but it's definitely a treat and they know they hear the bucket come out they come running so they love visitors because whenever we have visitors they usually get a little bit of a treat um you know some visitors too will will ask and by request um they're allowed to brush our cows um, so the cows love having their hair brushed, <laughs> which is a lot of fun. Um, you know, so feeding the, feeding the Highland cows and, you know, giving them a little bit of a hairbrush is always something we recommend doing here. Um, we, it's therapeutic. It is. Really. Yeah. It really. Yeah. Um, we also have a small farm apothecary shop. Um, so I am, my background is in healthcare. So I am actually a nurse practitioner. I have my doctorate, um, also an herbalist. Um, we're working on functional nutrition certification at the moment. Um, and so, you know, my yeah, my background is with natural health and wellness. And so when we were, you know, we had this farm and, um, you know, I'd taken all these courses throughout my education. I was like, Hey, let's, um, you know, let's grow medicinal herbs. And so, um, we make natural wellness products, um, from plants we grow here, or sometimes sourced from some other local farms. Um, as we make these products, we have this apothecary and we love chatting, chatting with people about, you know, benefits of plants, um, and just different ways people can use them. And so it's always a fun experience. I think people can have here as well. Um, 
over the summer, we partnered with a friend and a local yogi who offered yoga, farm yoga, a couple of times. With this goats? Uh, like, <laughs> so not quite. Not, not quite, quite. Not quite. The goats, uh, you know, are hit or miss whether they really want to participate. Right. They don't, you know, they, got, they have schedules of their own. <laughs> Absolutely. So we're hoping, you know, down the road, too, we'll be offering a little bit more of that, um, you know, and, and some more workshops and events is kind of what we're planning on transitioning to. We want more on-farm experiences. We're finding that's what people want. Um, we love it. That's our passion. We love educating, um, you know, both about animals, about local agriculture, um, sustainable agricultural practices, um, but also, you know, the plants and, and medicinal plants. And so we're hoping to kind of incorporate a lot of fun things um, mm. in the next year doing a lot of planning this year um, and I actually so I, I also help run like I said I'm a nurse practitioner I help run um, what we're now rebranding as a holistic wellness and sleep center and so I'm hoping to partner with our wellness center um, to offer some more you know partnerships and workshops here too so I think that will be really fun um, we also do I keep adding to the list um, <laughs> we also do on-farm tea time um, so oh. where people can sample my herbal blends, I know I do wow. herbal blends myself, and you know I don't want to pat myself on the back too much, but I've heard from a lot of people that they're some of the best blends they've ever had. So I'm very proud, um, very proud of my tea blends. And so we offer these tea times. We like to bring in um, like local pastries from you know some other really fun local businesses that we serve with tea, and people can you know interact with the animals and have tea and just spend some time on the farm. Um, and I think that's a really fun experience that's been oh. really great. And I really enjoy it too. I love it. Aaliyah, you're living my dream. <laughs> <laughs> I am, um, I am living my dream and I, you know, like every day I'm like, is this real? Is this real life? Um, so it's been, it's been amazing. It's, it's been amazing. a lot of work. It is a lot it's of, a lot and of it's still a lot yes. of work. Um, it is. It, it is. really is. Yeah. So we're, we're excited though to kind of see what else comes next year. Um, we just are are getting this fall we're getting a high tunnel um as well for you know kind of extending some of our growing season for the herbs and i'm actually planning on possibly doing um you know some like you pick herb sessions and maybe even flowers at the farm too so yeah wow that sounds amazing i'm just I, i'm half you know, drool i don't know if drooling is the word or whatever. <laughs> cool. it's, it's a lot you know we've we've learned some lessons over the years and we've kind of learned you know we're trying to just stick with our vision stick with what we're passionate about these are the things we're passionate about um and it's it's been a lot of fun and you know we're trying to just prioritize what works well for us and what we need to change or what we need to sure. adapt a little bit yeah well it's, it's your place you get to build it however you want it and use it yeah. however you want it and share it however you want it and it, it takes some time i would imagine to yeah. figure all that out but. it does but we've been you know we've been really pleased with feedback we've gotten um and just the success that we've had this far with some of these things too and so yeah. we're really excited to see what the future holds that's amazing so all right so alia you're a nurse practitioner you know, <laughs> working. Jason, what were you doing before? Were you, have you been a farmer for a while? Or I mean, 2014, uh, now uh, you can say you are, but <laughs> we, we are now. Um, neither of us were, were farmers to begin with. We both um, uh, grew up farming Jason, I guess. Um, when this opportunity uh, came up, I was I was living and working in, in Baltimore. Um, Ali and I had been dating uh, for a year or so, uh, kind of long distance. Um, the farm came up for an auction and you know, I get a text one day, I'm sitting at my lunch, at my desk eating lunch, and she says, hey, I won the farm, and um, from there we just jumped head first and haven't looked back. Um, yeah. But we've really thrived, I feel. You know, this is both, we, we both realize this is our calling. Yeah. Um, I, I spent, a, I've spent a long time as a uh, snowboard instructor, oh. so for me, the, um, the understanding of the hospitality industry is, has really helped uh, roll out our experience in the farm visit and you know, doing the yurt in the container. Um, well, your background's also in business, so he has I've a degree a, in business. So, fantastic. You know, he's always had this, you know, mindset for business and, you know, always wanting business ideas. So this is a great way for both of us to fuel 
our passions yeah. together, together. Really, yeah. I mean, both of you, your backgrounds, your interests, all this is, it's really perfect for what you're doing. It, That's, it, has, I, it has uncannily aligned <laughs> uh, what we've done to get to mm -hmm. this point uh, and what we've built. Um, that's that's a good point uh, yeah when, when we have time to reflect we you know we, we try to realize realize that and um, we, we certainly appreciate what we what we're doing and where we are every day yeah oh that's i mean to have found such a perfect piece of property and to be able to use it and share it and i mean that's that's a fantastic now when you first bought the property what was there did you have to build anything um obviously the storage container but um so when we when we moved here uh, I mean, the farm itself goes back to about 1904. Um, we're only the third family to to own it. Wow. Um, we we have we have since realized that you know we're not the owners; we're the stewards of, yeah. of the property. And mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it had a lot of uh, the old outbuildings. Um, it had a pavilion by the stream already. Huh. Um, the the barn we think goes back to 1917. So that's kind of been one of our passions too is to to ensure it's still standing in another hundred years or so i bet that takes some doing though you know it's you know we drive through some rural areas near us and it's like oh i hope nobody sneezes near that barn because it's right. going down <laughs> yeah right. luckily i think ours is still structurally pretty good at this that's point. awesome yeah, it just added, takes attention and yeah, above. <laughs> oh, for sure and we added some solar panels um to the barn roof which has been um pretty cool too um but yeah we added the yurt um and the shipping container and you know made some changes but nothing really major other than the two rental units uh, uh well i would say that the fencing oh, um fencing. you know i had to replace a lot of fencing and posts uh to contain goats and cows that's the constant um, work in progress constant work. Right. And how many <laughs> acres do you have uh, the original property was about 140 or 50 or so. Um, we're actually still surrounded by uh, roughly 140. Uh, oh gosh, so that's us, a lot of we, fencing, we, dude. It, but we, but the, the the nice thing is this is a this is a five acre parcel. Oh, uh, good. Building. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we we we've grown we've outgrown our five acres and uh, have subsequently bought another piece of farm property, which um, is the herb farm, which, which is, is where we're doing all of our growing, and it's almost it's between five and six acres wow. over there. Um, uh, yeah. grew, uh, the herbs say, are in the ground or are they in beds or? The ground yeah. and then we'll be adding the high tunnel this right. fall. Right. So next year, a lot of it will be in the high tunnel, which is going to be a big deal for us. And then still in the ground, um, yeah. like a field space. Um, we're actually planning on adding another rental unit there too. So we'll have, you know, this hope, hopefully another tiny house container eventually would be the plan there. I have visions of a rooftop deck overlooking the herbs and plants oh, and flowers. And so it sounds yeah. like heaven. Another, another goal. Yeah. Uh, another to-do list. Um, I did want to, I did want to, uh, right. right. Uh, I did want to add too, we got married here in 2017. Oh, um, and, and in preparation for that, we did it. We had it at our stream, and then had the party in the barn. And we spent, you know, a lot of time and uh, effort getting the barn kind of reclaimed for that. And um, that has since grown into, you know, an event space. And oh, wow! We, we just had our first um, non non family or friend wedding. Oh, um, that's something. Yeah, summer, and it was a lot of fun. Um, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Yeah, we were just talking about this uh this morning it was gorgeous there was you know you're out out at the barn and um i was actually doing some of the photos I, you know ph photography is a hobby so of course to you know attach to the list we also yeah. do on farm, on farm photos by the way i do on farm photography for clients oh nice yeah so anyways i'm doing photos some photos for this wedding and all of a sudden you know it had been raining a little bit a rainbow came out and there's this beautiful picture of the bride and groom with a rainbow and a highland cow um, and I was like, you know, again, we use the word magical. I'm like, magical, magical. <laughs> so we're excited. We put the work in there. Um, and now other people are able to enjoy that too. And just, you know, how thankful they were, um, you know, yeah. so, so touching to me, um, just how grateful people are whenever, you know, we can it's offer It's such an space. amazing thing. I mean, to be able to add to, you know, this important day of their life and yeah. to set this thing and it's in their own pictures and it's, I mean, they're never going to forget that. That's incredible. Yeah. Did yeah. you also cater or did you just provide the space? 
Uh, we're the space, yeah. We're, uh, <laughs> we're catering to a, a bigger pie that we don't necessarily care to no, uh, we, bite we into. Don't, yeah, we have no desire to go that route. <laughs> At least there's some limits here. <laughs> there are. We know, we know we need to have limits, and there's some things that, you know, I'm good at some things. That's probably not one of the things right. I would be good at. I will cook here, but cooking for a large amount of people yeah. is very intimidating. That is a little, yeah, it's a little much. Um, yeah, we're lucky, though. We have a lot of great um, caterers in the area. Um, and vendors, so vendors, vendors in general. Yeah, yeah, just so many other local farms and local businesses that are great to work with. And That's through all of this, it's been really great to make these connections. And so we have all these, you know, when guests are coming, visitors or our glamping guests alike, we have so many recommendations um, for them because yeah. of all of these wonderful connections we've made. And, we, you know, I think it's a really special place here with a lot of incredible people doing incredible things. That's, that's really something. And you've been there nine years at this point. So it's like, you know, the area, you know, the, you know, you can, you just have those relationships, which is really cool. So, uh, and we would not be here without those relationships. Um, right. you know, they, they have yeah. made it, uh, uh, very, um, suitable for us to do what we're doing because we know we can rely on okay. somebody else's vision and their business, um, to, to accommodate and to, uh, supplement ours oh um, sure and we're able to really kind of lean into the, this this smaller network of, of fellow businesses and farms and um, just the support we get from yes. other people that encouragement i think is what kind of drives us and keeps us going to you oh, know yeah. when you find a network of like-minded individuals doing all of these amazing things it's just yeah. so encouraging and we're like yes let's you know let's make all of these ideas we have work let's work together um and so it's really special that's that's great and i know you know I, I, as you're building anything you run into challenges and you know a glamp site and you know it wasn't like you guys were farmers before or glamp site owners before so i know you must have run into some challenges along the way can you share some because you know part of our listening group is also aspiring glamp site owners go could you kind of go through you know a couple of challenges that you faced and how you overcame them uh, sure. I'll step back and say that we initially started as a hobby farm uh, and we realized that um, hobby farms are kind of a money pit. Uh, so, you know, we've we've since discovered that, you know, being being small farms and this goes across the world, I'm sure uh, small family farms cannot rely on a single income stream. Um, so figuring that out over the years was very important and, and diversifying what you're doing and diversifying your revenue streams. Um, has really helped us grow. Um, you know, it, unless you're a, a big corporate farm, uh, yeah. anything smaller than that, you have to diversify um, to, to stay afloat, to pay your bills, um, to grow. And uh, that was probably the most critical lesson that we've we've learned. And, and now, as you, as you've heard, you know, we we've got a lot of um, irons in the fire, but that's you know that, that's kind of the reality of. Um, small family farms you have to right. uh, multiple income streams because you've got this great asset so you know yeah. you've got venue you've got accommodations you've got the tours the tea the plants uh that's fantastic and it all fits within the umbrella of you know what we're doing it right, right. And our vision and our goals you know and it's always coming back to you know what i have found is important is we need to kind of constantly just reassess and you know put our vision back on that goal. And what are we trying to accomplish here? You know, what are we doing? What, are, what do we want to prioritize? Um, you know, what didn't work? And so that's, you know, that's been huge for me throughout this whole process, constantly just reassessing, um, making sure we're still, our vision is still aligned with, you know, each other, but also our ultimate goal, of course, too. Yeah. Um, oh, that's, you know, that's for us too, it's balance, you know, time and balance, young kids, um, you know, we have a family, we have two young kids, we have one on the way. Um, and so I think that's been the other probably biggest challenge for, for me at least. Um, it's how do you prioritize all of this? And so, you know, just again, sitting down, assessing goals, prioritizing, I don't think I would make it without our calendar. Um, probably would not survive <laughs> I look at it like 500 times a day um, but that's important for me you know um, to kind of keep me on task yeah yeah same yeah same so how do you balance you know like there's you know farming is full-time all the time every day every day 
and then the guests and all that. Do you, any advice on how you're balancing all that? Uh, <laughs> Good question. Good question. I think, you know, it's constantly, we're constantly trying to find a rhythm that works for us. Um, and it's just always adjusting. Like I said, just constantly reassessing, um, you know, and, and prioritizing. Um, big list maker over here. So always making lists and trying to prioritize. You know, we have, we know we have things that need to be done daily. Um, we have have things that we would like to accomplish. We have things that must be accomplished. And so, you know, just kind of prioritizing, okay, today we have to get this done. We have to do this. If we don't make it to this task, can this wait until tomorrow? You right. know, so doing that helps. Um, I think we are also uniquely lucky that we have such a great su support system. Um, oh. You know, and I know not everyone has that. We, you know, we have some family around. Again, we have made this incredible network of friends um, as well who would take our children in a heartbeat um, mm -hmm. if needed. And so we're very lucky. Um, we have been lucky enough to find some contractual help um, who has been just essential to some of the things we've done over the past year, year and a half um, that I think it would have been impossible to accomplish without, again, this support system. And so, you know, it's great to get out there. It's great to network. It's great to um, find your people, um, you know, because without without our people, this would not be possible. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I would uh, imagine. Uh, of course, managing the people. No, you... <laughs> right, right. And uh, because of that, because of our, our farm help, you know, we've, we've been able to grow in probably the past year and a half. Yeah. Um, far faster and in, in, in more ways because of their help um, than if it was just me doing all the things I do um, on a daily basis uh, for, for managing and running the farm. Um, so they have been instrumental in, in you know, really helping us uh, get to where we are today. Uh, not discounting how much we grew just with Aaliyah and I over the past, you know, seven years prior. Um, it's kind of amazing what we were able to do uh, on our own um, up until we started getting yeah. help. I think we make a pretty good team. But of course, you know, we also need our people. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Well, that's amazing. Do you get some downtime at some point with, uh, you know, weather, of course, could be who knows during the winter, but. Um, yeah. So actually, probably our slowest month for everything happening at the farms we've realized is February. So mm -hmm. um, we are lucky enough, Jason's parents have a second home in um, Florida. Ooh. Um, and so it'll be a little trickier this year. Our daughter just started kindergarten, um, but we have tried over the past, you know, few years at least to try to just take some time um, to relax a little bit and, you know, enjoy some time away um, in some sunshine. Um, I thrive on sunshine and we get some pretty dark, cold winters here. Yeah. So it's nice for us to kind of just get away in the middle of winter, slow down a little bit and recharge. Um, and we found we need that. Yeah. Uh, might not be quite as long this year as what, <laughs> what we've been lucky enough to have over the past few years. Um, but, you know, we still realize that's, you know, it's important for us to take time. And so I think our plans this year are, you know, just trying to find shorter times that we can just mm -hmm. get away even for a few days. Yeah. Um, we've we've we realized that. that, you know, 11 and a half months out of the year, we, we pretty much work nonstop to, to have two weeks uh, in the sun um and yeah like a corporate uh, life <laughs> right yes um so we've we've really been uh, as Aaliyah kind of alluded to you know we've been trying to take um more short breaks uh mm -hmm. with the kids and you know try to try to get out of the farm off the farm when we can just right. to, um, save oh. our sanity and give the kids something other than the farm. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, and I think we did a pretty good job this summer too. You know, last summer it was just, every day was a grind. Um, and this summer we were like, hey, let's just take a little bit more time for, you know, our family and our kids. And so we were able to figure out ways to make that happen, um, which was really fun. And so we had a great summer with our with our children and our family. Um, what a great I, childhood this is. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's what I was no, gonna I mean, say Not too. too many kids, you know, back yeah. 
eons ago, you know, farm kids, that was a hard, hard life. Nobody was yeah. just doing a farm for fun and, you know, plants, yeah. you know, it, it just wasn't like that. Yeah. Our, our kids are very lucky. They love interacting with guests. They love being on farm tours. They love going to say hello to the yurt and container guests. They love just being on the farm. And even for us, I mean, you know, when I say we're working day in and day out, we love it. So yeah. whenever I say we're working, it doesn't always feel like work. Yeah. Um, because we're just so happy um, with yes. what we're doing. And I mean, we get stressed sometimes, but it's, you know, now it's stress we're putting on ourselves. Um, right. And and it's still just like every day when we reflect, we're like, this is our life. This is what we're doing. This is amazing. Um, so that, it's, it's a great experience for our whole family. Yeah. yeah. It, it, we, I think we've realized too, you know, we've, we've reached that self-actualization uh, phase of you know <laughs> we're we're doing things for ourselves and it's it's something that's working and there's you know a lot of upside to to growth you know uh, we we definitely envision the kids um, you know taking their lessons and whether or not they're doing this when when they're old enough or you know they they want to flee the nest yeah. um, to to me with a business background this is you know our kids have an invaluable uh, experience learning about business and farming oh. and you know, life and death on the farm. And I mean, yeah. these are, there's some really core life lessons that mm -hmm. they experience on a daily basis that, um, to your point, not many people get. Yeah. Um, and if I could backdate that real quickly, uh, believe it or not, the, the original family, um, they had 17 kids. Oh my gosh. Uh, so there were 17, <laughs> 17 kids. There were 54 first cousins and they, um, everyone we've ever talked to from that family, uh, and friends that knew the family, they they just talk about you know it goes back to that magical word you know as much um, as much hard work as it was you know there was literally a pile of rocks behind us that the kids had to go out and pick rocks out of the pasture for you know generations of kids and um, you know they all reminisce fondly uh, of the good things about the mm -hmm. farm and, and that life and um, that's not something that I think. Uh, a lot of people can say or, or yeah. maybe that's the innocence of, of children is that they just think of the fond memories and right uh, right not only yeah. are we doing that for our kids but our you know our visitors kids when they come uh you can you can see them light up and um they really connect to this to this place uh and it, it's very special it's incredibly special yeah i would imagine that's just a and then as a nurse practitioner you know like you've got to be what has been your like observation of you know people coming they're spending time outside in nature touching grass touching yeah, dirt yeah. touching animals like what is the, is this good I for love, us yes it's so good this is what we need and so you know kind of you know my passion is again more you know natural health wellness of you know mental and physical wellness and just being outside and connecting to nature I truly believe is key to that um, and I feel that there's so many people just missing out on these experiences and the fact that we can provide a place um, for them to just come and you know kind of reflect and feel rejuvenated um, you know we've people come all the time and they're like this is exactly what I needed I just needed to get away I needed to be in nature and so just facilitating that connection with nature but also you know the agricultural scene as well I think is really important you know getting people to understand more about sustainable agriculture and um, you know not that we're necessarily producing food other than like herbal medicinals we produce food for ourselves um, but you know, even then, guests are coming, and you know, it's getting that connection to your food, um, and educating. It's, it's so important for overall health and wellness. And so, the education is just so important, I think, too. So it's just been, you know, for me, it's this is what I love to see. I love to see people outside, um, just you know, focusing on their health, um, and that's kind of our long-term goal for the farm too. You know, I'd love to do more retreats um kind of as some of our pl our plan long term um like i said education workshops those sorts of things but all just connecting back to wellness both physical and mental wellness and so um yeah it's it's amazing to watch and there, that's there's, so great there's also a lot of evidence and this is you know uh, global um you know globally documented but they say that you know uh Farm kids have strong immune systems mm -hmm. um, just yeah. because of, you know, the they soil. They touch poop. <laughs> right, absolutely. It's great for allergies, too. I mean, you're outside, you're in nature. 
um, good for the gut microbiome. So I'm really good on big on, um, you know, gut health and the gut microbiome. And so just seeing people outside interacting with, you know, real food and the dirt and the soil and nature, um, it's so good for the gut microbiome, which is key to health. And so it's really encouraging to see that. So amazing. That's so great. I just, I love everything about what you're doing. Or right, if you had some advice to pass along to new GLAMP site owners, what would it be? Um, do research, uh, yeah. use that as a good, um, a good, a good reason to book, uh, and, and stay in other places. When we were, when we were researching the shipping containers, we ended up, um, staying in one in, in Asheville, North Carolina this winter. Uh, and that kind of helped inform and give us a, uh, maybe a blueprint on how we wanted to execute ours. And, um, it's definitely shaped, uh, the, the experience we've built with, with our container. Um, the other, you know, the other lesson is it, it goes back to diversifying your, your income. You know, uh, if, if you're a homeowner, or you've got land or a farm, um, adding value added, you know, for us, we, we started with the, the farm experience and then the yurt, uh, and all along we realized, you know, you have a, you have a captive, um, customer when when they're staying on your farm so if you've got these little uh, you know little things you can sell them people are people want souvenirs they want uh, keepsakes they want um, experiences and and having that value added product um, people are, are gonna are gonna buy it if you if it goes back to if you build it they will come if you make it they will buy it um, and that that has been big for us because we we you know, we knew it was there and then when we we're able to finally tap into that. Um, we realize that you know this this helps our financial security, and um, at the end of the day, being able to pay the bills is uh, the only way we can keep our lights on. Yeah. Um, so that's you know for me from the business perspective, that's that's been the biggest uh, lesson that, that I would pass on. That's great. And I love that. And marketing, marketing, social, social marketing. media. Oh my goodness. Yes. Marketing is huge too. Um, actually, yeah. Social media has been incredible for us actually. Hmm. Um, probably one of our better marketing tools that we've found over the years. Um, I was thinking that, I mean, with yeah. as scenic as it is, and then you've yeah. got the Highland cows and goats and cow, you know, I mean, all this, I would imagine your guests take pictures like crazy. And of course they're yeah. posting them. <laughs> so. yeah, we love, we love being tagged in Facebook and Instagram posts and um we'll get some google photos uploaded to our google profile too nice. i love seeing every single picture um i love it so, but it's great too because other than other people are you know seeing these photos and they're like oh my gosh i need to come see this cow what yeah. is it a yurt this is really cool i want to stay here um, yeah. so marketing is is definitely important um it's huge yeah. Yeah, in a previous life i used to to be a, a newspaper ad salesman oh wow so, you know, the, the advent of uh, like Facebook and social media, you know, you, you no longer have to necessarily advertise in your local newspaper with, you know, social media. Uh, it's free. Um, it's word of mouth, but uh, in the digital form. And, and that has really transformed marketing for a lot of yeah. smaller, well, even even larger businesses, too, because it's just um, you're letting you're letting your, your customers and your followers uh, help get your get your word out, um, yeah. and again, in terms of you know dollars, uh, that's invaluable to have that kind of free advertising, free marketing. Oh, yeah, right. definitely. But people are also feeling engaged, you know, in what we're doing, which I think is a really important part of it. You know, we're creating that experience. They feel engaged. They want to bring other people so they can have that experience too. Mm -hmm. Oh they, yeah. They, and, and you know, I think there's there's a little bit of buy-in too. You know, they they want to follow along our our animals or our chickens as they walk past. Chickens us. are walking in front of us on the chicken porch. parade. You know, and yeah. I, I yeah, I'm not a fan of them being on the porch. Like ah, oh, chickens. <laughs> <laughs> our daughter loves chickens though, and so from the time they're like little, she's holding them. Oh my! Um, she's like in love with chickens, so that's why they think they can just do whatever they want. Oh, sure, <laughs> because they are very well loved. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> but they give us delicious eggs, so you know oh, it's okay. So great, <laughs> so great. Man, well, this just—I mean, Yorkie Acres sounds like paradise, magical paradise. That's uh, I like to think so. 
Yeah, that's that's so great. Where can people find out more? Um, so we're on several booking platforms: um, Airbnb, VRBO, um, Hipcamp. Hipcamp um, for booking. Um, we, of course, social media. Um, try to be as active as I can on there. And I love adding, you know, animal pictures to our stories on like Instagram so people can come and, you know, see little, little animal pictures. We have actually two different um, social media accounts. We have one for the farm, which would be more focused probably on our rentals and the animals, Yorkie Acres Farm. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have one for Herbal Earth Apothecary and Gardens, which is the apothecary farm store. Um, as well um, of course our website www.yorkieacresfarm.com um, and Herbal, then herbal earth apothecary.com <laughs> yes that too um, and then of course people we get a lot of emails so people can contact us through our website or just email us at yorkieacresfarm at gmail.com as well um, and we love answering questions and um, you know getting people to to the farm yeah that's fantastic well folks you have got to get out there if you're anywhere near maryland even if you're not travel because <laughs> this sounds so are about three and a half hours to uh the dc metro region cleveland so you're right there two um, hours from pittsburgh pennsylvania um we're we about to... 10 hours drive really from most of the east coast so yeah and we've had people come from pretty far who have stayed yeah. here um that's i mean so we've great. had people come like stay from florida and Texas. you know texas west coast um canada you know different areas and so it's you know for us that's been great too we love meeting people um yeah. love it too so that's been a great experience um awesome. for all of us yeah i love it that's so great well guys you got to go there <laughs> that's all there is to it go see it go pet the cows go chase the chicken well maybe don't chase the chickens be nice to well, the chickens. Can chase <laughs> I mean, can chase yeah they'll probably chase you if you have snacks but well there you go <laughs> <laughs> chase or be chased <laughs> i love it i love it And that's a wrap for this episode of Glampalooza. We hope you enjoyed your journey into the world of glamping and learned something new. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on all things glamping. And if you loved this episode, please share it with your friends and family. Until next time, get outside and play. <laughs>